Ever wondered about history beyond the boring stuff in books? Well, you're in for a treat. We've got 20 photos that spill the beans on some crazy jaw-dropping moments you won't find in your regular history class. We're talking real, raw stories that give you chills. Stick around and we'll unpack the tales behind these snapshots, showing you a side of history that usually stays in the shadows. Ready for a ride through the unknown? Remember to subscribe so you can experience more mind-blowing history. Let's get into it. Shell shock in World War I. Check this out. A World War I soldier scared stiffly by his uniform. Why? Shell shock is a fancy term for war-made PTSD. After the Great War, lots of these heroes had it rough. I saw things that still give them nightmares. This guy? Just the thought of his hat sends shivers. Picture this. Months in trenches, bombs, every 10 seconds. They messed up their heads badly. Berlin Wall's human side. This pick, pure gold. A German soldier, breaking orders to lend a hand to a scared kid at the fresh Berlin Wall in 61. The story, heart-wrenching. The soldier said, screw the rules, and helped a boy who got ripped from his folks. It shows that even in the toughest times, humanity sneaks in, a soldier's royal moment. Ivan Babcock is a 29-year-old from the U.S. Army's 165th Signal Photo Company. Picture this scene in Siegen, Germany, on April 3, 1945. He's not just any soldier, he's wearing the crown of the Holy Roman Empire, a piece of history that dates back to the late 10th century. Now this cave he's in? Germans used it to hoard priceless art. The first U.S. Army snagged it, revealing this unexpected treasure trove. That crown on Ivan's head? It's a copy made in 1915, ordered by Wilhelm II. The real deal? Chillin' in a bomb-proof bunker under Nuremberg's Imperial Castle. The man behind the lens, T5E Brum, captured this moment, a snapshot echoing through time. Chilling cold therapy. Get a load of this frozen moment. Soviet nurses on baby duty, practicing what's called cold therapy in 1958. Imagine babies bundled up, sleeping outside in the frigid Soviet air. Crazy, right? In the land that's now Russia, they had this wild idea from the 50s to the 70s. Even in winter, little ones catch Zs outdoors for that fresh air and sunlight fix. Yep, picture tiny tots napping in the snow. It might sound odd, but back then, it was the norm in Soviet Russia. Shell-shocked soldier 1916. Take a solemn look at this photo from the Battle of Flair Corselet in September 1916. Here's a shell-shocked soldier haunted by the madness of war. Look into his eyes and you'll feel the weight of it all. In that trench, everything this soldier knew, all the rules of life, just shattered. He's there, slumped, afraid, surrounded by death. There were no smiles in those wartime pictures. It was a different kind of reality. This photo is a glimpse into the Battle of Flair Corselet, part of the larger Somme Offensive. Tanks made history, but victory remained elusive. The toll on both sides was immense, captured in this haunting image of a man broken by the brutal reality of war. Mr. Rogers' poolside stand. Flashback to May 9, 1969, and picture this. America is post-segregation but not relatively equal. Community pools, hot spots of exclusion. White folks are shutting out black neighbors, still clinging to biased beliefs. Amid this, Fred Rogers, the friendly face from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, made a quiet yet powerful move. Episode 1065 aired, and there he was, inviting Officer Clemens, a black police officer, to share a plastic wading pool. A simple act, but one breaking a notorious color barrier. Despite the Civil Rights Act of 1964 ending legal segregation, pools clung to prejudice. Racist beliefs lingered, using fears about disease transmission and protecting white virtue as excuses. In some places, segregation was enforced with violence, beating black swimmers who dared to enter the water. Carlin's comedy revolution at Summerfest. Fast forward to a groundbreaking moment at Summerfest on September 11th. Is the American Family Insurance Amphitheater prepping for a laugh riot and the headliner? None other than the comedy maestro, Dave Chappelle. Tickets. He said, they're $125. I said, God damn, I don't 
are only 80. It was a historic move, marking the first time a comedian took the festival's main stage. Sure, comedy's been a summer fest tradition, but rewind to 1972. Enter George Carlin, a comedy legend who left an indelible mark. Nobody gives you a list. That's the problem. They don't give you a list. Wouldn't you think it'd be normal if they didn't want you to say something? That His infamous show included the iconic seven words you can't say on television. The result? Not just laughter, but also disorderly conduct charges. Carlin's arrest catapulted Summerfest into the spotlight, turning a routine festival into a headline-grabbing event. His charges? I dropped in December, thanks to a judge who saw it as an exercise in free speech, not a disturbance. Holocaust's Unseen Stories. Look closely at this poignant photo from around 1945. It unveils a heart-wrenching chapter of the Holocaust. You see thousands of wedding rings, once worn by victims who faced the unthinkable. The Nazis, in their brutality, stripped these rings from those they persecuted. Each ring holds a silent narrative of love and lives shattered. This image is a stark reminder of the profound tragedy endured during those dark times. The final days unveiled. In 1959, Igor Dyatlov led nine hikers into the Ural Mountains, a cheerful journey captured by diaries and cameras turned tragic. Setting up camp near Mount Otorten, they vanished under mysterious circumstances. Discovered weeks later, some under a cedar tree and others in a ravine, their bodies revealed bizarre injuries, including missing parts. Cameras around Zolotaryov's neck and at the campsite documented their joviality, seemingly dispelling foul play suspicions. The tent, cut from the inside, and footprints leading away intensified the mystery. The investigation closed inconclusively, reopening 60 years later, attributing their deaths to hypothermia after an unexplained force, possibly an avalanche, forced them from their tent. Yet the Dyatlov Pass incident remains an enigma, haunting history with unanswered questions. Charles Thompson greeted his new classmates. In September 1954, a pivotal moment unfolded as Charles Thompson stepped into a public school, becoming the first African-American child to integrate after the Supreme Court's landmark ruling against racial segregation. Less than four months prior, the court had declared segregation unconstitutional, marking a seismic shift in American education. Charles's entrance into the school symbolized the breaking of racial barriers as he warmly greeted his new classmates. The notorious mobsters unveiled. Take a peek into the shadows of history with this photo from 1931. Here, mobsters, once comfortable orchestrating heinous crimes, find themselves at Al Capone's trial. What's intriguing is their sudden discomfort when faced with the lens. Colonel Bedell, the unyielding combat expert. Step into the past with this intense snapshot from 1943 featuring Colonel Anthony Joseph Drexel Bedell. It might resemble a scene from a John Wick movie, but it's the real deal. Colonel Bedell, a U.S. Army colonel, was no ordinary military man. Renowned for his expertise in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he took training to an extreme. Picture this. He ordered trainee Marines to attempt to take him down with bayonets, only to disarm every one of them. Not once or twice, but consistently earning him the title of the USA's best hand-to-hand -hand combat expert. Colonel Bedell, a former boxer, won numerous competitions in his prime. His prowess extended beyond personal victories. He trained hundreds of troops in the art of close quarters combat during both World War I and World War II. His legacy as an unyielding combat instructor lives on, marking a chapter in military history. Colonel Bedell left us in 1948, but his impact endures. Princess Diana's compassion knows no gloves. In the annals of compassion, a moment etched in history, she occurred on April 19, 1987, when Princess Diana stepped into London Middlesex Hospital. Her purpose, to inaugurate the UK's first unit dedicated to treating individuals with HIV and AIDS. Princess Diana's act of profound humanity unfolded as she shook the hand of an AIDS patient barehanded. In 1991, captured in a poignant photograph, she continued to break down the irrational fears surrounding HIV transmission through casual contact. At that time, 
society grappled with misinformation and prejudice, with reports of shunning and stigmatization against AIDS patients. A glimpse of love amidst war. The harrowing years between 1914 and 1918 saw the world engulfed in the flames of the First World War. During the chaos, a poignant photograph captures a Serbian soldier finding solace near Belgrade's front lines. Here, a soldier burdened by the weight of war finds respite as his father visits him. Together, they share a moment of connection amidst the turmoil. The extraordinary duo of 1922. Delving into the captivating world of the early 20th century, we encounter a fascinating pair who defied societal norms and became renowned figures in the circus realm. In 1922, Nellie Blanche Lane, born in West Virginia, stood proudly as the sideshow attraction Jolly Nellie, with an impressive weight of 642 pounds. Overcoming childhood bullying, she embraced her stature and joined the John Robinson Circus in 1918. We meet Clarence Chesterfield Howerton, fondly known as Major Might, on the opposite end of the spectrum. Standing at a mere two feet four inches, he became the focal point of sideshow acts, often appearing alongside performers of varying sizes. The juxtaposition of Jolly Nelly and Major Might exemplifies circus entertainment's diverse and captivating nature during this era, where individuals with unique characteristics found a platform to shine. Masking up amid crisis, 1918. Our journey through history takes us back to the bustling streets of San Francisco during the tumultuous times of the 1918 influenza pandemic. In a poignant snapshot frozen in time, a stern-faced policeman addresses a maskless man, embodying the public health measures adopted to curb the deadly contagion. The stern gaze of the policeman and the unspoken urgency in the air convey the gravity of the situation, reminding us that throughout history, adherence to health protocols has been a cornerstone in overcoming pandemics. Sunshine Amidst Duty, 1945. In a poignant moment from 1945, U.S. Army nurses find solace on a sunlit deck beside a 40mm anti-aircraft gun aboard a Coast Guard manned troop transport returning to the States. Statue of David shielded in World War II. During World War II, Michelangelo's masterpiece, the Statue of David, stood encased in protective bricks, shielded from potential bomb damage. In another poignant image from 1945, Jewish prisoners, liberated from a death train, reflect the resilience and hope born out of liberation, marking a moment of profound historical transition. Luckily, Florence mostly escaped damage, with the Allies targeting only a rail station. You can see a similar view from the Academia, showing the preserved art. Oswald Mosley attacked. Oswald Mosley, leader of the British Union of Fascists, was surprised in October 1937 while giving a speech. Two stones from the crowd struck him in the head after he delivered a fascist salute to 8,000 people. The incident captured a moment of public dissent against Mosley's controversial ideology, an anachronistic enigma in 1941. Back in 1941, in Goldbridge, British Columbia, there's a black and white photo of folks celebrating the reopening of the South Fork Bridge. Most are dressed like typical 1940s citizens, but this guy is an outlier. He's rocking a printed t-shirt, cool sunglasses, and vibes that seem more like Depeche Mode in 1990 than a 1941 bridge celebration. People got all hyped up, wondering if this dude was proof of time travel. But hold up. Turns out the camera, the stylish haircut, and even the edgy sunglasses, all things that make him stand out, were available in 1941. Even his supposed printed t-shirt was just a sewn-on logo from a sports team of that time, the Montreal Maroons. So, no time travel magic, just a guy making different fashion choices. Resilience amidst the darkness of 1945. In 1945, as World War II was winding down, there was a powerful photo capturing a group of Jewish prisoners. These individuals had just been liberated from a death train. See, as the war neared its end, the Nazis tried to evacuate concentration camps before the Allied troops rolled in. War is rough. This image captures one of those raw, unfiltered historical moments. 
If these rare photos blew your mind, don't keep it to yourself. Hit that like button to show some love, subscribe for more intriguing history deep dives, and drop a comment with your thoughts or questions. We love hearing from you. Share this video with your fellow history enthusiasts, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you're always in the loop.